Hello, and welcome to another episode of A Toy Store Near You. I'm Brian Volkweiss, and today's episode is Toy Du Jour, which is owned by Liz MacArthur and Sam Wells. Maybe one of those owners I just mentioned was a little late the first day I was there. Not that it was a hot day in Chicago, but it was a hot day in Chicago. When I walked in, I felt instantly better because there was a beautiful sun-faded poster to Toys That Made Us, and I'm so appreciative for the support that Toy Du Jour has given us from day one. And I really hope you like this episode because the toys are great, the story is great, and this is one of, if not the funniest episodes we've ever done. So I hope you dig it and thank you for watching. Our search for the most imaginative toy stores has carried us across the world. From the lights of Japan to the suburbs of Chicago. From the picturesque canals of Harlem back to the canals of Chicago. And while the names may vary and the curiosities get more, well, curious, one thing never changes. Chicago's surprising amount of toy stores. Today, we head back to the Windy City and Logan Square. Now well, it's more of a rhombus. In any case, this proud multicultural community houses 70,000 residents who, in terms of squares, are anything but. And show meetings. the city, and then zoom, drone shot, and then here we are, just stand here and ow. <laughs> Hi, I'm Liz MacArthur, and this is Sam Wells. We own Toy Du Jour, vintage toys, arts, and farts. In Chicago, Illinois. From the classroom bells to the bells of matrimony, these two yeah. um, enthusiasts Did you hear that? <laughs> took what they loved and brought it back to their community to teach an ever-changing city that the artsies and the fartsies are here to stay. We're still here, though. We look closed, but we're open. But with a little heart. Is that the Care Bear Seer? And a good head on their shoulders. This, but with a dead baby. Toy du jour knows through sleep, snow, or buyer's remorse. What's happening? There's nothing <laughs> a good laugh can't solve. It's just one big long con. <laughs> We've been collecting toys since we were teenagers. We met in high school. Well, back in late 90s, early 90s. Mid 90s, Mid -90s. the medium yeah. middle of the 90s. We decided to form a business in high school together. Immediately, I was like, you look like you're terrible with money, but you like the same stuff I like. So we'd go to garage sales. Antique malls. And thrift stores. We were like the only people under 20 at the antique malls. <laughs> yeah. People called us the kids. The thrift, the thrift, the thrift kids. Yeah. Hanging out with all the old men at the machinist hall. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, and we did get Beanie Baby crazy. Nothing's been hotter than those cuddly little animals with cute little names. Should we take that out? <clears throat> <laughs> Don't worry, Sam. The 90s were a different time. A time that, thanks to a healthy mix of booming cartoons and a little thing called the internet, begin a craze in collectors the world over. And when you do that, you find extra of those things, which usually leads to a lot of space in your grandma's basement. It's not hoarding, though. It's collecting. Yeah. So the thrift kids set out to bring their hoards, or collections, to the masses. And reselling stuff at like toy shows, our local Toy Man toy show. We started there probably in 98, and we've sold ever since through many outlets. And then eBay was invented. And fast forward to 2014, and we've got a storage locker with a ton of toys, apartment full of toys, crappy job. <laughs> so we found a brick and mortar and opened our first location, and that's when Toy Du Jour was born in Logan Square. And so it was that Toy Du Jour would spread its wings and. Wait, that's not how it's spelled, is it? The story behind that is quite boring. Back in 2007, when I was looking up the URL, I was spelling it properly, but I never pulled the trigger. So the domain was gone. If you're not familiar, these domain registry websites, look at what you've been searching over and over again for months, and eventually they'll register it themselves. By the time I registered it, I was annoyed that that had happened to me, and I just spelled it with a D-E, because it was my site, and I don't care. Plus, there was another toy store that spelled their name incorrectly, and they, they did okay. Ooh, 
Well, that sure is one less pain in the neck. It's showtime, babe. But I'm sure you can give 10 reasons why it's worth it. Number 10. Number 10. Troll dolls. Those are trolls with a jewel you can wish on. These are stupid. They are not stupid. Probably the number one customers of trolls are the people who are like, oh, God, I didn't realize I was walking into a toy store. I don't know anything about my friend, but I saw her wear a raincoat once, so I'll get her this as a gift. Ew, yeah. That's the thing about that is that there were so many of them, we set them all up on our counter for a photo, but they kept selling off of our counter that day while we were trying to set them up. I mean, they're just fun to look at. Yeah. Cool, number 10. Yay. <laughs> Speaking of our regular customers, it was actually probably our most handsome customer. Definitely most handsome customer. That started courting us about this space. Hi, Internet. I'm Liz. And I'm Sam's friend, Mike. And we have an announcement to make. And after a couple months going back and forth, uh, the talks became real. We're moving the store in January 2020. We're not telling anybody where we're going. It seems like a terrible idea. We were there for six years, and we moved to this larger spot in the beginning of 2020. And then, and then the world ended. You went out with a bang. It's fine. Yeah. Number nine. Number nine. Lucky egg chicken machines. Don't do that while you're talking. Number nine. It was my number one machine at Showbiz Pizza. There's a chicken, a fake chicken, that box and box and box and spins around and then it pops out an egg with a fun toy in it. And you just simply open it up. This, children can do this. You just open it and then, oh look, I got a Rubik's Cube. Isn't nature beautiful? And we actually got these machines from our neighbor down the street, Logan Arcade. And when we found out they were gonna loan them to us, one of us cried. <laughs> that was number nine. Number nine. It's fine. Number eight. Specifically, this Care Bear cousin. This Care Bear cousin right here. What's his name? Cozy Hat Penguin. How cozy that hat is on his heart. So finding them in their box is a little bit difficult. The color of these guys, when you see them all together, is just kind of magical. I love it! Our store is like probably like 80% He-Man, Star Wars, G.I. Joe. So it's really great when we see like Care Bears or Rainbow Bright come in the shop. But they like fight evil with love. Care Bears stare! Just and it, right? belly light. It's, you shoot it out of your belly. Is that the Care Bear stare? They stare with their eyes closed? Yeah, they stare through their soul. Mm -hmm. Oh. The store's tagline is vintage toys, arts, and farts. There's a lot of commas in there because we do more than just vintage toys. We also have vintage clothes. Like household stuff. Wigs. We have at least one wig. We also have newer collectibles as well, like Marvel Legends, uh, newer Transformers, stuff like that. And then the arts and the farts. The farts is self-explanatory. I just fart a lot. And we have fake poo. Yeah. We have cat fake poo. We got human fake poo. We got fake dog dog doo doo. That's the three basic poos. Those are the fake poos. If you want to get into the real poos we got, you're going to have to slide in my DMs. <laughs> <laughs> or my BMs. <laughs> Did you get the BMs? <laughs> So one of the great things about having physical location is the community we've formed around the shop. There's a honking party right now? Hey, I heard Toy Du Jour was recording a video. Let's go to a honking party. What's happening? Chicago's a pretty great city for toy collectors in general. It, it's actually a pretty tight-knit community. There's a bunch of different shops here, from Japanese import toys to designer vinyl. We all go to each other's shops. I mean, we do this because we like this stuff, so. We message each other if it's like, hey, do you have a Thundercat? Because I have a customer looking for one. I'll send them your way. Loyal customers, like this one. I'm Zespi. I live and work in the Logan Square neighborhood. 
literally got back into toy collecting because of the temptation of having a great toy store down the block from me. It's weird that everybody thinks that it would be like a cutthroat scene, but it's it's not. It's super friendly. People send us video footage of their shop saying like, hey, this guy just stole from me. Make sure that he doesn't do the same to you or look for the items that he took from me. First thing I bought from Toy Du Jour was probably an impulse purchase. I couldn't wait to slowly take everything from the store and move it into my apartment. Freaked out, went blank and just bought some random junk. That's probably what happened. Everything in there I wanted, had to have, reminded me of my childhood. 95% of what's here is stuff that people have brought to us. We are charging $15 for this game, and we left the garage sale tag on here. It's pretty great knowing that the shop is not just curated by us, but it's also the people that have brought us things. Well, come buy our trash. It's $14 now. <laughs> and it, it's also kind of cool to think about just the money that we've paid out because we buy locally, and that money just goes back into our own community. We didn't even buy that for a dollar. It was actually free. free. <laughs> Someone's trash. We're just selling it for $15. We're scam artists. Oh, God. My favorite part is finding something that has some vague memory attached to it. MC Hammer wraparound board game. And then you actually see it and it blows your mind. So oh, you get to pick a rap leader, and that's just exciting in and of itself. And maybe next time I'm at my parents' house and I look at the photo album, I might see that actual toy sitting there from one of my birthdays. So that's always really fun. What's I'll never open it. Doing that, you don't just buy the things that you like. You spot things that you know that you know. Other people will buy. Yeah, I've also been lucky enough to work with Doomco Designs, and we've had some exclusive releases of his vinyl figures, the Tarbus figure that he's done. We've had three colorways now, and the uh, one we just posted up that sold out within a day. He's just uh, a itty bitty guy. We have a lot of artists that produce stuff that we carry in our shop, a Warlords of War figure, Galaxor, Battle Babies. So we have these things in our store that we call Lizardermies. Um, as many shops as there are in the city, you have to have something that sets you apart. Because they're taxidermies, and also my name is Liz. Hello, nice to meet you. We've done a pretty good job of that because there's a lot of stuff that we produce ourselves. They don't bleed that much. There are there are a handful of shops that are like ours where it's vintage mostly. He's dead, so he's no longer screaming. You would assume would be like, oh, that sucks to have competition, but it's kind of great. Put the baby in its mouth like that. Just drench the baby. Ow! What else do we make? So something else that we've something else we've been uh, doing lately is started with some micro machines. So we've we've carted those on a Home Alone backing, so you can have your home security item just like Kevin McAllister. Yes, it's so smart. <laughs> we recently did Baby Sinclair from the TV show Dinosaurs. Not the mama. Not the mama. On a Not the Mama card from Maury Povich. Get it? You get it. <laughs> You are not! If you're old enough, you get it. You get it. You'll see it. We'll show a picture of it here, and you'll be like, oh my god. How are they not millionaires? Okay. And people buy that shit. Number seven. Number seven. This particular figure is one of the best things in the shop right now, because The Undertaker, very hard to find. Everybody's got a price! So finding them, you know, mint on card is almost impossible. Like, I've never seen them. I mean, these, these guys aren't easy to come by. This, this is a kind of pricey figure. Oh! Name your favorite wrestler. Go. On three. Okay. One, One two, two, three. Jake Ultimate the Snake. Oh. I like Jake the Snake because his girlfriend's name was the same as my name. And also, he had a sack of snakes. <laughs> Number six. Number six. This is Galvatron <laughs> from the Transformers Energon series. <laughs> He's looking a little less purple. It's a repaint of the earlier Megatron that came from the same series, but it's got the nice gray and purples to it. Galvatron. So in our store, we have uh, vendors, kind of like an antique mall. And this comes from our vendor, Collecticon Toys. This was six. Six. Right. We thought we couldn't possibly fill up with people like we did before, but the opening night was rammed in here. Couldn't get through the walkway just to grab a toy from the other side. Yeah, we did monthly-ish art shows featuring lots of, like, pop culture themes. The last one we had in this store was Walrus Mania, which was all based around Walrus Man from Star Wars. What? We did, like, a Ladies of the 80s, Ghostbusters. We did a Stranger Things show. Is that supposed to impress me? 
Ninja Turtles, where we did not have illegal tattooing going on in the back. Oh, man, we did. We did not. Not. We did not. That's illegal. I wish you'd stop doing that. We actually did an official Voltron art show, which was pretty great, but our previous location was pretty small. No kidding. But with a big change of scenery came an even bigger outpouring of love from Logan Square. It was ridiculous, and I can't believe we had that many friends and followers and customers that came out to support us. We have been invited here today to share with Nikki and John a very important moment in their lives. We've actually had two weddings here since we've been open. Now they've decided to take advantage of the tax savings <laughs> and officially live their lives together <laughs> as husband and wife. Um, they were small weddings, but um, there has been love given and received. That was a huge, huge help to us when we reopened. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Yes, you did it. Okay. <laughs> Number five. Five on our list is the Channel 6 news van from Ninja Turtles. I don't know how many kids got the news van that were super into <laughs> playing with a news van. Can't they do it now? I mean, that's probably part of it. It's not as fun as like the pizza mobile or whatever. <laughs> Get out of the way, bad dude! Whoa! Yeah, like, oh, let's go. Look at the news. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. Number five. Go that way. Number five. Number five. Oh shit. <laughs> I guess this is more like the weirdo to toys we like to carry. This is Sweet Amanda. She's representing all of these high schools li listed here on the side, I guess. I think this might be the new lands that she has conquered. You have a different take on this than I do, but oh. okay. So in the fashion of bootleg toys, knockoff toys, dollar store toys, it has the trademark. Nothing, nothing on, the on the back. Quality, that's, that's, that's the trademark. You know. Quality. Toys, props, wigs, a couple weddings. Surely we're not forgetting anything? How do you how do you bring up your Instagram? How do you bring it up? Like, oh, okay, it's yeah, watch this. <laughs> Call up my ex-boyfriend and I'm like, you know, it's really funny sometimes now when people are like, Dude. where's your Instagram? And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's weird now because I moved. It's a uh, toy de jour. Mm. T-O-Y-D-J-O-U-R. It's spelled wrong. <laughs> and then that's how you know. You get it. We started it back in 2014, and not only do we sell through there and show things that we have, but we've also done a lot of purchase photos since the beginning. And even then, a lot of is a bit of an understatement. When people buy things here, we ask them if they want to take a purchase photo with the item that they just bought. With 20,000 followers and over 13,000 posts, one could say that... We're Instagram famous. Like, ish. We're not like Kim Kardashian. You... Not quite Kim K. But looking through these, Liz certainly found a way to put the pop in pop culture. Since it started, there's also been a side effect, which is the Liz is there hashtag. Liz started photobombing a lot of our customers. She kind of just slides in out of nowhere. It's turned into a thing where people come from out of town and they're bummed if Liz doesn't end up like photobombing their picture, which is pretty great. Because even if people know that it's coming, they still want to see it. Did you miss me? <laughs> Do you want to do this one together? <laughs> Middle of the ways. Because then one is like literally Saint of Spring. We'll talk about Spring. Number three. Number three. Number three. Number three is our line of Hall of Flame candles. It's not hoarding though, it's collecting. Yeah. I think the very first one was this guy. Our kitty of the laser pointer. When we had our kitty cat attack art show. Come on, Battle Cat. So we have stuff like the Saint of Hair, uh, Great Hair Days, Our Lady of Cruelty. It's just something stupid that we like to have in the shop. Oh. We're on a very busy street. Now you can imagine all the power in the universe. This one's pretty cool. An original 8-bat, but with the Takara sticker on it. Whoa. What does that mean? There's a lengthy reason why Takara, masters of the universe, are in high demand right now. 1982, Takara spent about 18 or 19 months developing their own version of Barbie, and it sold extremely well. Takara made their money, Mattel made their money, and all was good until Takara paired in 1984 with Mattel's sworn enemy and rival, Hasbro Incorporated to develop the Transformers brand. Gray and purples to it. There was a big 
problem. And Mattel decided to terminate Takara's license to sell Barbie. And Mattel approached Bandai and said, hey, want to sell Barbie? Let's do it. And it was a lawsuit. It was a whole debacle. There's a reason why Mattel didn't get along with Takara, so there weren't a lot of Mass of the Universe figures on Takara Japanese brand cards. They were only made until about 1986 in Japan. Ah, just what everybody needs. Finding one uh, Takara release is almost impossible. Unless you have a toy store where people bring you awesome stuff, then it's kind of easy. You have to go look at it all. And you guys don't either, because it's here if you want it. It's here. I blew my mind when I saw it. Oh. Number one. This is our favorite item in the shop right now. What? Ninja Hero Rider Galloping Horse. Uh, so as we mentioned before, we love the weird stuff. There, there's a lot of Ninja Turtle bootlegs. This one by far is one of the most sought after. It's not even a freaking turtle. It's not, it's a frog. It's a frog with, with an eye patch. With an eye patch. And I'd say the coolest thing about it is when you get batteries in it, it works really well. We actually did that for like an hour, but we edited it down. <laughs> so that was our 10 favorite things in the shop right now. They could also be favorite things in your home if you want to buy them. I think we're going to throw something on there. Nope. Cool. Yep. <laughs> We just wanted to say thank you for everyone who's been reaching out to us, buying stuff on Instagram or Facebook. It's fun to buy things you love from people who love it as much as you do. And that's sort of the first impression you get from Liz and Sam. They're just like you, and they're selling their stuff so that you will please take it from them because they don't have room in their house anymore. And we got to open back up in July. On Saturdays, it gets kind of busy, and it's freezing here, and people will wait outside, and they're really nice about it. And I don't know, everybody's been really cool. While this has been going on, it's been really nice. So find us if you liked what you saw, or if you'd like to see anything else. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. And with that, we wrap up our time in Logan Square. If you find yourself in the area, pop into Toy Du Jour. However it's spelled, come for the community, get a nice photo bomb, but remember, of course, to stick around for the farts. Now what do we do? Can I wait? <laughs> Just wait for somebody to contact us.